Okay guys, you've seen the thumbnail and you know what this one's about. This is a hub conversion for the Arma Centon 3S and it is a 10 scale four wheel drive car and we're gonna convert it from the stock hub size out to 17 millimeter. Now I have the 17s on it right now and it's got the 6S Arma Typhon tires on it. Look how neatly those fit underneath there guys. When you do the hub change, it opens a whole world of tires up for this car. Now keep in mind it is four wheel drive, it's 10th scale, and it has a plastic chassis. So be real careful when selecting your tires. Don't put a super heavy one on in place of the normal weighted tire. The arms will take more damage from the inertia from the extra weight. So when you're picking your tires, you can get bigger, wider, whatever you want to put on it. As long as the steering radius works, you're golden. However, try to keep the weight similar to the stock ones so your performance stays about the same. So let's get it on the bench and let's show you how this is done. Okay guys, let's go ahead and get the wheels off of this. Now first you back off the nut and we'll try and, oop, there we go. Go ahead and pull it off of the hex. There you go. Tuck it underneath there, just get some elevation. And take a look at that guys. Perfect time to do a little cleanup around the bearing and the hex drive itself. Now on the top here, if you center this up, there is an Allen screw grub nut in the top of that. Now, these are small, so be careful, but back that out and then slide off the hex and there's a drive pin right there. So we want to go ahead and remove that as well. So these are the three components you're going to have. Now, the new ones, they look quite a bit bigger, but they do fit on the shaft. So go ahead and spin off the nut, make sure the threads are good. Really nice. Uh, this nut is not knurled. So here's the hub itself. Now you notice there is a threaded hole on one side and there's a much smaller hole on the other side and that's your piece so we want to line up with this right here this hole across the top there we want to line that up with the hub now there's the small hole and there's the larger hole so you want to set it with the larger hole upward right there line them up good guys now hold the drive shaft so that hub doesn't the spindle doesn't slide in and right there perfect now you want to take that new pin and you want to slide it right down into that and get both pieces connected. There you go. And if they're lined up good guys, just like that, should slide right in there. Push it a little deeper because we are going to have to put a grub screw in here. So push it down, but take a look at this guys. See this? It can't come out the smaller hole, but you can use the hole to push it out later. Really nice. So we'll take the grub screw now and we'll just sort of tighten it down in there and lock that pin down so it can't come off. So it won't throw it. Now I'm not using Loctite on this one. This is just the demonstration, guys. There you go. Nice and tight. Nothing to it. Let's test fit that nut again. Make sure it goes on easy. Nice. Spins on good. I will probably change the nut off for uh, one that's got knurling on the back, but these will work for now. There we go. Now, if you take a look at the stock wheels and tires, see how small the hex is there? And they're a lot bigger wheel on the inside than they look. So that gives you clearance. This is a buggy tire and wheel, and it's 17 millimeter. Look at the size of the hole in the front there, guys. It's a lot bigger. So those would not fit originally, but now they pop right on. Just like that. And it's a buggy tire and wheel, so it's narrow enough it clears everything really well. There's no 
no conflicts in there at all. It goes right on. So let's go ahead and quickly swap this out. You'll see the same thing. We're just going to run through it real quick, change all of these out so that we can get on with the tires, show you what's up. They're really simple to put on, guys. I mean, really, they're real easy to do. I can see it being daunting if you haven't taken one of these bef apart before, but really, it's nothing to be afraid of. Um, the wheels, the hubs, everything comes apart real simply. And if you're careful with how you put it together, it'll go together real easy. Now, just be careful when you're threading in the grub screws, guys, because it is a small Allen, and it, would, it doesn't take very much pressure to twist one of those out. So I really don't like the idea of using a lot of Loctite on it because you'll strip it out and it'll be in there forever. So just be real gentle with that. If you're going to use any, use very little. Now, this right here is a limitless wheel, and it's got a skid on it, and there's a felony rear wheel, which is a 107. So let's try the limitless one first. There you go, pops right on, very nice. And this is a giant buggy tire. Isn't that something, guys, look at that. So we'll go ahead and finish up with the other buggy wheel and tire there. So as you've seen, here's the parts that we took off. So there's the nuts that restrain everything, hold the wheel and tire on. These are the hexes that we took off. See the slots in the back for the pins? And there's the pins. So we didn't reuse those. We'll keep those in a baggie. This is the replacement set. So I got this at eBay. They were not expensive. And they are a pretty good kit. If you're gonna use one of these guns, guys, nice and gentle, it's just aluminum, so don't get crazy with it. There you go. Well, let's get some wheels and tires on here and show you what your options can be. So this right here, that is the rear wheel off of the arm of Felony. And it's a 107 millimeter and it's wider than the other ones. However, it goes directly on and the clearance is good all the way around and you still get full steering with them. So they do fit. However, you're going to want to change your suspension and stuff to make the pavement stuff work better because right now it's set up for dirt. Look at that. Everything's tight, works real well. Excellent. These are Typhon tires. They are Success 8 scale. These are Italian tires. And these are the tires from the Mojave. All three sets go directly on with no issues. These are an aftermarket type of tire. So are these, and they're very big. These ones I use on my Creighton when I'm goofing around on the pavement, and they're, they really balloon up good and everything, but they fit as well. Okay, guys, there you go. The 17 millimeter conversion for the Arma Centon 3S. Now, it opens up a whole bunch of stuff. Like I say, you know, these tires, you, you can get just about any type of tire on here now that 17 millimeter as long as it clears when you turn the wheels in the front and the weight is similar, you're gonna be good to go. Now, the cool part of this is you can change the offsets and there's different types of hubs. This is the type I chose because I wanna keep the wheels in close when they fit under the body. I don't want them hanging out. That doesn't really look right and you have body clearance issues when you do that. You can raise the body on the posts, but what I'm planning is a low to the ground speed car for the pavement. And in order to get those shocks to sit where they're supposed to be, and these are sitting a lot lower, and when I put the pavement tires on them, they sit even closer, which allows the wheelie bar to sit just about that much off the ground, so it'll get a little bit of a wheelie, but it won't stand it up enough to cause problems. In order to do that, to get them down, your shocks have a normal travel to them. So this one's got about an inch, and I have a small silicone plug in the bottom, and that's just a piece of fuel tubing, guys. And I put it on there to limit how far down this will travel before it bottoms out on that piece. And that adds a little extra cushion, so when you really hit hard, instead of just burying the shock all at once, it has to compress that piece of silicone first, which gives you that little bit of extra protection. Now that's nice, especially if you have to limit the throw on a specific type of car. However, on this one, I'm trying to take a shock that's this long and make it that long. So in that case, you dismantle the shock and on the inside, well, it's compressed. And what that means is you take it all apart 
And inside here where the plunger's at, you put this same type of silicone tubing inside so the shock can't travel out as far. It'll bury it up against it. So that piece of silicone is between the plunger and the housing for the shock when it's assembled. It's a little bit of a pain to do, and in a future video, I'll show you how that's done. But what we did was we took about three quarters of an inch out of the travel like so in this car, and that squeezes it down to about this area, which gives it a little bit of travel for on-road, but it doesn't give it this great big long travel so the body rolls and pitches. It's more stable. This particular one, this is out of a Creighton EXB, and it has heavier springs on it to deal with a larger car. However, this one here, Pretty simple, we went ahead and we installed the silicone inside, lowered it down really nice. These tires, they're dirt tires of course guys, but that's not what I'm gonna be running on it. This was just the demonstration for you so you can see how the hub conversion will change things. This raised it back up, but with the street tires on it, it sits a lot lower. Now, that's one of the things we did to it. Also, we lowered the body posts and I actually had to trim a little to get it to sit down enough so this could take place. And what we have here is the drag body that's going to go on this, and it sits just like that. Now, it looks pretty good that way, guys, and when it's painted, it's going to look pretty impressive, but it needs to sit down a little lower for the wind resistance, and with the paving tires, it will do that. But look at the difference here, guys. There is probably half an inch of clearance from the body to the wheels, so the Typhon wheels are a little bit narrow for that application, However, oh, here they are. This is what's going on. And look at the offset. These are rear wheels for the Felony. So that's a 6S car. The weight is just a bit more, but I'm not going to be bashing it through the woods and stuff, guys. This is just for the street. And if I can keep it off the curbs and in the good asphalt area, these will hold up just fine. But if you see, there's an offset here to the outside. So when they're inside the body, it sits it out just a little farther and it fills it in really nice. So that's my game for that. Also, what we changed in this car, we did put a hobby wing speed control in it that's capable of 4S. We got a 25 kilogram servo inside, and we are running the stock motor with a heat sink and a fan system to keep it cool. I've tested it, it does run at 4S. I can't say how long it's gonna do that, but we're gonna run it that way anyway because we wanna see how that holds up. Um, I did build the wheelie bar, and we're gonna check this out real quick for you. So the wheelie bar is a pretty simple setup. This is a piece of carbon fiber and I took the original bumper off and I shaped this to match the bottom plate, okay? I drilled and countersunk the exact size of the original one and got this piece run out. Then I straightened it A to B with some tape to give me a nice straight line out. I cut a piece of plastic here, countersunk it, put the wheelie bars on it and I braced it from a block that came from T-Bone Racing. Now this is an adapter block that allows you to use the T-Bone Racing rear bumper, which is this one. Okay, so it's not as big and bulky as the stock bumper that goes with it, but it's a really strong piece, you know, and it's, it's held up to a lot of damage. Um, but it is nice because it does give you the exact shape and size that you'll need. The stock one does that as well. But it also gave me that top plate, and this top plate right here, is what I'm talking about. So using this top plate piece and just putting a spacer in there and cinching it down made this really strong. Guys, it's super strong. So it'll hold up really well when you get on the rear wheels here. It'll keep it about half an inch off the ground in the front. It should look epic when you stand on it. And that's the idea with that, guys. So when we get the paving tires on it, we get the body done, we'll do, do another video on how all that works. But at, in the short term, just changing out the hubs made all that possible. Hey guys, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. It's awesome when you do, and a little thumbs up would help a lot too. You know, that helps us here at the channel more than you possibly could know. And hey, by the way, don't forget that notification bell to stay informed. You know, here at the channel, we try to be helpful, we try to be constructive, but at the end of the day, we try to have fun doing it. Now, we like to see things fly here. We like to see things run hard. We like to hit things, you know, we don't intentionally try to break the cars, but we know we push them harder than we're supposed to. And we're not driving them like cars half the time. We're flying them. 
But that's what we want to do here. We don't ever get butt hurt when we break something. We buy the parts and repair it. Now, the cool thing is when we do push it too hard and we do break things, it allows us to build content for you guys. Perhaps this is a car that you own. Perhaps it got out of pocket and you smashed it into something you weren't intending to smash it into and you break the parts that we broke. Our videos, hopefully, will be able to help you repair your car. And that's the whole point here, guys. We're trying to be helpful. We're trying to show you how to fix something you have. And we try to show you upgrades and mods to make the cars cooler. In our opinion, that's cool. You may hate what we're doing here. That's fine. That just means it's not for you. But for us, that's what we're looking for. And that's what turns us on. So keep in mind, guys, that these upgrades and these recommendations are just that, recommendations in our opinion. Everyone here at the channel loves doing this. The videos are kind of new to us as far as we've only had the channel for a short period of time here, and you guys are helping it grow really fast. I'm really impressed with you guys. But at the same time, the whole theme of the videos is to be helpful and upbeat about the hobby. We want to get new people in. We want them to be as excited about it as we are. And when they don't know what to do with their car, we're here to help them understand how to fix it. Okay, so that's the game. If you guys have any mods for this particular car, because this is the video for that, please feel free to leave it in the comments down below and help others along the way. I'm AJ with AJ Jam Studios saying, keep wrenching guys.